And we're going to work on the Lincoln. She just blew a brake line. I thought I did all the brake lines on this thing, but I must not have. But anyways, I've got it jacked up. I got jack stands under front and rear so the safety police can rest easy. So uh, you can see here, see that puddle? It's brake fluid. So let's get underneath there and see what we can find. I guess it's been sitting long enough to rot out one of the brand new brake lines I put on. This is why I hate letting vehicles sit around. But in a turn of events, my daughter thinks she wants to drive this. So I guess we need to get the brake lines fixed and give it a good look over. All right, so this line I put on about a year and a half ago. And it was in a bad place. It went over top of the plastic fuel tank, and I'm sure it held crud up in there. So... Uh, we're just going to go ahead and replace it. When I did this, I was using up all the brake line that I had laying around. Uh, so, let's see, the left front and the left rear, I believe, are epoxy coated. The right rear and the right front, I'm telling you backwards, this side, the driver driver's side, so the left side on uh, over here are not epoxy coated. I had enough of the epoxy coated to do the other two and you know I thought certainly it would last you know four or five years you know, apparently I was mistaken so we're just gonna take them both off and replace them but this we're gonna put tires in this thing because they're pretty bad and I'm thinking there's one of the wheels that's bent so I need to make sure and find out so we're, I've got it up on jack stand so we're gonna start it up and see what we got or it just shuts off like that. But anyways, this tire was going in and out and I marked it right here and that was the bad spot. So we're gonna go see about some new tires tomorrow. I'm gonna go to Napa and get some of the epoxy coated brake line to finish this. And it's got a check engine light. I know it needs at least one ignition coil that's acting up. I'm gonna look into the airbag light. I'm gonna look into the traction control light. See, this Lincoln had the air ride suspension deleted. It has uh, traditional coilovers. And it also kind of sags in the front. So I don't know how old these are. Uh, these, um, what do you want to call them? Uh, strut assemblies. I guess coilover shocks is what we call them because they're not really a strut. But uh, they could be worn and just collapsing from age. Uh, they make a, a leveler kit that you can put in here, but um, you know, that's like fixing the effects and not the cause. So I may, if she's going to drive this, I'll look into everything else. If she's going to drive it, we may consider just replacing that because it's just low in the front. The back sits where it should be, but I mean, look at the difference in the coils on these things. Um, you can see how big that one is. Man, you guys need some light on the subject here. There you go. And then there's how big this one is. It's quite a bit bigger. So the rear seems to be okay. But I'm going to go ahead and spray these down with PV Blaster just in case we decide to change them out. Um, so that's where we're headed. That's what we're doing. We'll get back with you as soon as we've got some parts. So I'm trying to figure out what's the most cost-effective route on this Lincoln for tires. All right, here's where I'm at. This Lincoln originally had 25570 18 wheels and tires with, you know, very little offset. This is a spare tire from the same vintage, the same year, F-150. It's just a spare. That's a 17-inch wheel. All right, so 235, 75, or something like that. It's 17. All right, so the reason I'm interested in this is the fact that I have some used tires that could be used on these. Now, if you remember, maybe you don't remember, these are chrome plated aluminum wheels. And on the backs of them, they have a tendency 
of the chrome to do this. When it does, it ends up hitting the rotor and you get this noise and all this kind of nonsense. Um, so I'm considering replacing these wheels. So I'm trying to control the budget on it the best we can. Make the, get the most bang for my buck, okay? So I went over my, to my tire storage area and I had these tires. This is the original Lincoln tire. This is uh, off of Super Duty. This is a Goodyear SRA, a Wrangler SRA. It is 245, 75, 17. I have two of those. This is a Kelly Safari TSR, and it is a 265, 75. Let's see, where is it? 265, 70, 17. Okay, now if you notice, what we have here is the Super Duty tire is a little bit shorter and slightly narrower, which would be really good in the snow. That's a good tread pattern for the snow. But I put them Lincoln in the middle so we can compare. This one is slightly taller, slightly. Maybe the same if that one had tread on it, if the original Lincoln had tread, and slightly wider, but a very aggressive tread. I mean, these things are extremely extremely deep tread I took these off of super duty uh, they came on a truck I bought and if you can understand what I mean by this but uh, they were far too nice of a tire for the caliber of truck they were on so I swapped out the whole entire wheel for something else more suitable to the truck so what I'm doing is I'm wanting to make sure that I can use a standard 17 inch rim on this and still clear everything so that I can spend my money on nice new wheels instead of on tires. But if I buy wheels, I have to buy tire pressure sensors and I'll have to buy uh, lug nuts too. So nonetheless, I'm getting a far better tire. These tires or the tire I would put on this is about $120 a piece plus mount and balance. Of course, I'll mount them myself then I'll take them in and have somebody balance them because I'm going to get aluminum wheels if we do this. Um, I'll save the money in mounting. I'll pay for the balance because I'm not going to use balancing beads on these. Now, the other thing is the Lincoln came with passenger tires. These are load range E's. Everything I've been thinking about putting on is a load range E tire. It's going to ride a little rougher, but the tires are going to last longer. Um, I think that's going to be I don't know. It might be a, this is probably a more suitable tire for the truck, for the, the Navigator. I keep calling it a truck. It's really not a truck, but I guess. Uh, this is a, a more aggressive tire. This is going to do good in mud. Uh, I don't, maybe in snow too, so it'd be a good tire, but it's going to be noisy. That one's going to be quieter because the shoulder is so much closer, not so big. See that big shoulder there? That's going to give us that roar in the tire. But the cost is right. The price is right. Now, if I chose to go with the Goodyears, I know where there's two more just like it reasonably. However, if I have to buy new wheels to go to 17s, I don't want to buy any tires. I want to use these. So that's the plan today. So my daughter thinks she wants to take it. I may have mentioned that. If she wants to take it, then I have no problem putting new wheels in and wheel speed sensors and lug nuts and all that stuff on it, all that jazz. And she gets, you know, a decent vehicle and we'll fix some of the other stuff. Um, the original Lincoln wheels and center caps, I'm sure there's somebody out there who can use those and is willing to pay just a, a small fraction of, you know, I'd sell one wheel probably for what you can get all of them for. And somebody will probably pick them up. It's not a big deal. If not, we can throw them in a the scrap bin. Not a big deal. Um, that's the plan today. So let's see what we can do and go from there. So after exhausting the search, Craigslist, Marketplace, anywhere I can think of for used tires, tires and wheels to fit this, the most cost-effective way, I'm not going to say it's the cheapest way, I'm saying it's the most cost-effective, the most bang for my buck is to use these tires with new wheels. 
I can get used takeoff F-150 wheels that'll fit this. They're ranging anywhere from 450 for ones that need tires, and they're 18s, so I'm basically in the same boat as I was right there, up to the highest I saw was 1650 for brand new takeoffs with good wheels, but I believe they were 18s or 20s as well. I don't want that. I want to be able to use truck tires. I come across truck tires, 17 inch truck tires, pretty regular. So that makes this more cost effective. Now I'm still gonna have to, I'm not gonna break these down and reuse the tire pressure uh, monitoring sensors in there. I'm just not gonna do it. All that work isn't worth it because those are still 2005 batteries that are inside all of them. I'll get new ones for the new wheels if that's the way we go. Right now, unless something comes up, if something comes up on the internet that's a great deal that I find and I'm in the middle of demounting these and I haven't got the wheels yet, well, that's what we're going to do. But right now, we're going to uh, break these down manually. So I need to get all the weights off of them because I don't want to tear the bead taking it off. And that's one certainly a good way. I'm not so worried about the backside because it's not going to come off the back. It's going to come off the front. We're going to break the backside bead first. And you see the the belly here, or they call that. Guys get so upset about this. It's called a drop center. If you don't call it a drop center, everybody gets all cranky out of shape. All the things in the world to get cranked out of shape about, I'm pretty sure that's not it. But we're going to break all the backside beads loose, flip the tires over, break the front, take them off through the front. I got all the backsides broke loose. As I get one broke, I'll take dish soap, put it all the way around the rim so we can work down in the tire, down in that area. So it gets on the bead real good. So when I flip it over, I don't have to worry about tearing out as much. So I'll do that to each one. That way, when I come back to the first one, hopefully it's already worked its way around. Now we'll flip them over and break, break the beads on the front. Okay. Here's what I use, just a couple tire spoons. I got these from Kent Moore, is who makes them. All right, all the tires are off. Beads are all in good shape, didn't damage anything. I'd say they came off pretty good, but they're a pretty stiff sidewall and they were a little bit of a fight. But it is what it is. And I didn't show doing it because the last time we showed uh, dismounting tires, we had a bunch of uh, keyboard warriors or armchair warriors, whatever you call it. You know the guys. The ones that know not everything but never make a video showing anything. Those guys. They left all kinds of comments about how wrong we were doing it and all this crap. And the way I saw it was... The tires came off, the tires went back on the last time we did it, when I showed it I'm talking about. No damage, held air, went down the road the way it's supposed to. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a success in my book. So if you guys are wondering why there's been no videos lately, one is we have a lot of stuff going on, a ton of stuff going on. Two is I'm having trouble with my, my camera. Uh, I've done many, many videos and I lose the footage. I don't know what's going on. Uh, about the time I think we got it fixed, it happens again. Um, so as you see here, I'm tethered to a cord using my cell phone, and now I'm having troubles with it. So we're just batting a thousand here. I have to figure out something for a camera. Because we haven't been able to do our 
regular videos. We got lots of work going on. So on to the next thing. We're going to get the scanner out and we're going to see what the codes are in the old Lincoln. All right, we got the scanner on. Let's see, six anti-lock brake codes, three anti-theft codes, three anti uh, instrument cluster, four for the transfer case, the liftgate trunk module, the seat module, good lord, tire pressure monitor codes, airbag codes, navigation module codes, good lord. Okay, heated O2 circuit, high voltage, it's probably open, and system, EVAP system vent control fault, I'm sure that's corroded. Transmission, heated O2, same thing, same thing. And anti-lock brakes, primary pressure transducer circuit or brake pressure sensor circuit. Module calibration, left speed, left front wheel speed sensor input. Holy crap. Oh, she's got the whole gamut going on. High voltage, low voltage. CAN bus fault, and the anti-theft. Uh, I think a lot of this is going to be... Because uh, um, the battery was dead, there's going to be some of that. Alright, let's see what we got here. Come on, man. The screen's dirty. Uh... There's a whole list of crap, that's for sure. I wanted to see transfer case, there we go. High battery voltage at module, low battery voltage at module, integrated wheel and solenoid circuit, vehicle communication network fault, that's great. Um, you know what, uh, I got this on video, so I have a, a record of all this stuff. So we are going to go ahead and clear all these and start it up and see what comes back because there's just there's just too much here let's go back and clear all codes let it do its thing and then we'll see what comes back all right so immediately we have the obd2 system checks in complete of course um, and the anti-lock brakes is going to be the primary pressure transducing circle circuit or brake pressure sensor circuit mm. integrated wheel and module configuration boy there's a lot of crap in here the air suspension is all going to be um every single corner because it's completely disabled impact sensor fault hmm i'm we'll gonna look into that because that wasn't on when we first got it Okay, well, that's uh, that's something to start with, I guess. Key on engine off test. We'll go ahead and run this. Key on engine off. Continue. All right, let me dig in this a little bit more, and we'll see what we got. But it looks like it's a O2 sensor issue for one of them. Um, I, that's kind of the one we're, I guess worried about the airbag if it's an impact sensor I gotta find out which one it is to go from there um, and this is all we got so far impact sensor fault so I have to look this up and see uh, which one it is because I don't have internet here so I can't log on to look that up but ah, we will get to it not a big deal for the restraint system impact sensor fault that's the one that come up so what we're going to do to find out which one it is we need to know which impact sensor it is we'll turn the key off take the key out of the ignition put the key back in start it up and we're going to count the airbag right right there watch the airbag it's going to flash four times pause and then the next flat set of flashes will be which one it is so that's 42 so here comes the one two three 
four, pause, one, two. So it's number 42. Now, number uh, 42 means it's the front crash sensor. So we'll have to take a look at that. Let's get underneath the front of it and see what we got. Trim panel's out. I don't know how well you can see this or not, but this is Ohio and stuff gets rusty around here. Uh, right here, we got some corrosion coming out of the side of this thing. It's so hard to get you a, a look in there. You'll have to trust me. There's some uh, corrosion. And it looks like it's got rust jacking going on, so I wouldn't be surprised if that sensor's no good. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do, because I'm not a pro with airbags at all, is I'm going to disconnect the battery. Um, that way, I can't, I won't activate the uh, airbags by messing around here. So, let me get, uh, let me get the battery disconnected, and then I'm going to take that sensor out of there because. It's hard for you guys to see maybe, but it's just a 10 millimeter nut. I'm gonna pull it out of there. I'm not gonna unplug it until I get it out and then uh, we'll look at it. Well, I barely touched it. <laughs> this is what happens. So uh, before we do anything, we're gonna replace that. Uh, what happens is you get, you know, dissimilar metals. Like, uh, I don't know if this was an aluminum sleeve inside here on a steel stud, but the two react and the corrosion spreads it apart and breaks it. Uh, the likeness that this plug's going to come off here is pretty slim. Um, we'll have to be very, very gentle. I'll spray it down and uh, let it soak. Before I mess with that, but it's coming apart, and the sleeve is stuck on that stud. So, um, again, gingerly, because I don't want to be replacing uh, more crap than we have to, uh, I'm going to get it out of there and soak it and kind of move my efforts onto something else while it soaks and give it some time for the penetrating penetrant to start working. I think the guy whoever came up with the word gingerly was probably working on something corroded like this and said I should gingerly move that back and forth. So it doesn't do that. Go figure. The day just gets better. Just gets better. Yeah, that was that was a good bolt. Um, my efforts are what broke it. So I'm going to have to drill a hole in there. Because uh, that thing has a couple push pins where it mounts straight up and down right here and here plus the bolt so I just created a whole crap ton of work for myself great because I didn't have enough oh boy guess we'll see what we can do here I don't suppose it really matters at this point as long as it's bolted to the front somewhere and can't move that's the big thing so let's we'll see what we can do that'll focus you can see that connector's got a case of the crusties in there uh, so we're going to take this apart and clean it and uh, these you take this little red deal out of here this little retainer and after that it allows you to get to the locks now I have the set of snap-on terminal removal tools but I got to tell you something what I found works the best is just an old car antenna that I took to the grinder and sharpened to a point. If that gives you any idea how sharp that sucker is, it will make you bleed. And it holds, it's strong, because it's a, it's a car antenna. You know, it's, it's good steel. So I use this a lot instead of them, and it didn't cost me anything because I took it off an old junk car. Let's see if it'll focus on that end trying to see if that end this piece of uh, wire here this connector I'm trying to look and see if it's been broke or if it was a fresh that sure looks corroded to me that looks like it's been a uh, been broke for quite some time 
it's so hard to tell you're trying to make it focus and it does not look like a fresh break to me so hopefully that's what it is we got to, we'll get another one coming um, they're actually fairly inexpensive uh, I just googled that 4L14 number and uh, it came up all over the place made in the uh, CANADAA all right get this going you know your repair is going the wrong direction when you decide I better bring my roll cart over closer because I'm gonna need a lot more tools and then you go looking for one of these so you can go try and reach the piece that you dropped that fell into a bisque you know that little bitty black plastic push pin that fell into here somewhere I looked I'm like I'll never find this I will never find this and then I looked right there and there it was so maybe things are looking up <laughs> oh, dude it only gets better just fantastic it just can't get any better than that that's just all there is I hate rust I hate rust Well, it's going to come out. Uh, it's going to be ugly, but it's going to come out. It is what it is. Now that there's a ginormous hole down there, I'll have to repair also. Well, it's out. Um, yeah. So it took a little bit of the core support out with it. So yet again, there we just keep getting deeper, deeper and deeper and deeper. There's uh, actually a bunch of missing metal here. So I'm gonna have to plate that. I have to get this cooler out of the way. Drop this rubber out of here, and uh, <laughs> somehow. Weld something on there to stay. Gotta love rust. All that for that broken stud. I needed to be more careful. I tried. I tried all my tricks. Just didn't work. When I got a broken bolt, what I like to do is, if I can, grind it down flat and then take a center punch. Center punch right in the middle of it. And then start drilling that way i can if i'm going to try and use an easy out i'm in the closest center as i can be if i'm not going to use an easy out and i'm just going to use a uh, drill a hole and put a bolt through it i still want to be in the center so i can get the location right so now i'm going to drill that out and see if i can get on the back side or if i can ease that thing out i believe it's a welded in stud so i'm probably just going to have to drill a hole through the back side and add another bolt and tack weld it that's okay. We can handle it. 
I drilled that out completely and it was welded on the back side of this. So I drilled all the way through the back side. And then what I did is took a long quarter inch bolt. I set the original stud here next to it, shove this one up through where it needs to be and cut it off. And now what I'll do is I'll clean this up on the bottom and just tack weld that head. So then effectively I have the same thing and it'll allow that crash sensor to sit flat on here without having any welds in this area. So that's the plan. So now I gotta clean this up, get some tack welds on the back. We'll see what we can do with that rusty sheet metal. Pretty decent little tack weld. And she's as good as new. Nice and straight, just the way we need it. Perfect. Okay, on to the next dilemma. It's snowing outside, but 72 in here. Oh yeah. So here's some more of that epoxy coated brake line I get from Napa. Um, I know a lot of guys say, man, I love that copper nickel mix stuff. And I have some and I've used it from time to time, but I gotta tell you, I just prefer this. I, I like the way this flares, the, that nickel, there's a roll of it right over there. I like the way this flares better. That stuff flares so soft and so easy. Maybe that's what it is. You just don't have to work hard enough to use that stuff. Maybe that's why I don't like it. If it was easy, I don't like it. Let's do something difficult, I guess. Or it's the fact that I've been used to doing this forever and anything else just seems like it's, you know, not good enough. But there's a lot of people who use it and love it, but I'm going to stick with the epoxy coated. It did all right, so... So it does inverted flares, regular flares, quick connect fuel lines for GM. Uh, is that all? Metric, standard, all that. So I've used this before. I got several videos where I showed using it. So I'm just going to hurry up and get this done so I can get it in. There's the two new epoxy coated lines. I uh, got them on. Got them all routed and back in the holders and zip tied where I want to add zip ties. Got the back brakes bled out. I'm working up here on the front, and uh, <clears throat> this is kind of odd. You don't see this too often. Uh, I couldn't get I couldn't get any brake fluid to come through the bleeder on the caliper, so I thought, well, maybe the bleeder's plugged. So I took it out and I blew through it, and it's not plugged. And I looked down inside the actual cavity or the the port where the bleeder goes in it's not plugged um, I took uh, the brake line off right here where it comes into the brake hose and had my wife push on the pedal I got good fluid I put it back on and she pushed down the pedal and you can see it flexing from here back to here so I think there's a blockage right in here somewhere I took the hose off the caliper and there's that little hole down in there which you guys probably can't see I cleaned that out, I disconnected that line, I tried to blow air through it, uh, couldn't get any air to go either way, whether it was this way or through the, the bleeder fitting, the port for the bleeder, when this hose was on, I couldn't get anything to go through that hose, so there must be a blockage in there, um, and uh, we probably never know it because we weren't driving it that much. Um, my daughter thought the brakes felt a little weird, but... I thought that was because the, it blew a brake line. That would make good sense. But I'm going to order a brake hose. We'll get that put on. That'll be the next part. But we're going to we're going to get call this one quits right now. Um, I'm uh, going to be waiting on parts. Uh, got a lot going on here. Um, so we'll bring you back once we once we got uh, the wheel and tire situation handled, and we'll look into the O2 sensor yet and 
couple other things. Anyways, we'll leave you with that. We'll pick up with it next time. If you guys like what we're doing, give us that thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Leave your comments down below, guys. And we will check, catch you on the next one.